beautiful this is Rome here and welcome back to seduce me the Tommy game um it's been a couple uh, days since I pre-recorded since the last episode so I had to rewatch a bit of my episodes um last episode Sam had told us his real name which is Almaris I believe so which is a key detail as he said his name, I could feel it lock into my memory. Something in my head would make sure I would never forget it. Sam pulled away and stared at me, despite still carrying worry in his eyes. If you're in any danger, any time, it doesn't matter when, call my name. I promise that I'll come and help you. Of course, Boo Boo, I will <laughs> really call your name. It's really cute, like in animes and all that, in movies. It's like the guy's always like, call my name, I'll be there for you. But like, in real life, it's not happening. <laughs> I stared up at Sam, unable to say anything. I could only nod in response. Sam nodded back before releasing my hand and heading into the dining room. Something told me that that name would be used eventually. <laughs> Skip in. Set up and walk away. We're not, we're not gonna do anything. Okay, this is the part. Like, this is where I skip and all, and then my emotions aren't really attached to the storyline, but I, I know that you guys don't want to reread everything again, so. Amaris! All of a sudden, a bright purple light engulfed the room, causing their devils around me, including Iris and Alex, to cover themselves. What the? Ugh! Gusts of wind rushed past me, almost forcing me back. I covered my face with my arms, bracing myself and standing on my ground. I tried to peek through my arm to see what was going on, but the light continued to shine brightly. As the gust slowly started to die, the light began to fade, revealing a very pissed off Sam. Sam. Don't worry, I got you. Um. <laughs> At that moment, Sam didn't even give Malik the chance to breathe. As I blinked, I saw Sam's first ram itself into Malice's cheek, sending a devil flying back against the wall of the warehouse we were in. You motherfucker! Sam was relentless. He quickly followed Max to the wall to give flaming his fist to Malice's body. The imprint of Malice's body in the form on the wall of Malice's feet and the wall of punching. The remaining people stared, trying to figure out what to do. Help Malice to watch in silence. Iris, however, walked up beside me, crossed her arms, and as she walked with an amused smirk on her face. Get off! God. With a blast of heat, Sam was forced back from Malik. Sam slid on the balls of his covering balls. What? Covering his face for the burst of heat that forced him back. Malik, on the other hand, was practically on fire. His menacing eyes evilly glared, deadly dead at Sam as Malik gripped his gun. You're dead, Incubus! This one is way more intense than battle form. Malik pried himself from the wall and began to fire hot bullets at Sam. However, none of the shots made it to Sam's body. In the blink of an eye, Sam had disappeared from his spot and reappeared at Malik's side, ready to lay a heavy punch to Malik's head. Too slow! Malik wasn't as slow as Sam thought. Malik quickly turned to shoot at Sam, who barely had the time to dodge him. It quickly turned into a fight of Sam using his speed to dodge and try to hit Malix, and Malix using his gun and devil-like skills to try and lock up Sam appearing for him. It, it was almost too fast to follow. However, I could tell something inside Sam had changed. He wasn't holding anything back in this fight. It was as if something incredibly demonic had taken a hold of him and forced each punch through and each step he made. Was this the extent of demon power? I didn't have a chance to answer myself as Sam tried to dodge Malik. Sam tripped and landed on one knee with a loud thump. <laughs> oh my god, is he okay? Gotcha, bitch! I gasped in horror. Sam had no chance to dodge or run. I could only stare, petrified. As Malik charged forward, I jammed the barrel of his gun into Sam's mouth. Eat hellfire, he give us! Then at that moment, something in the air changed. The air instantly went from frantic to still and energy. What could have been described in tone as the color red quickly turned into a deadly mix of purple and green, as everything began to blend together all at once. 
My eyes never strayed from Sam's face. However, even as it changed, they began to glow and it glowed a bright, a bright glowing color. As Sam began to bite down the gun in his mouth. As the trigger was pulled, the gun was snapped in two between Sam's teeth. Holy hell! Yo. <laughs> Small fragments of the gun flew everywhere while the look on Malik's face went from confused to petrified. Before Malik could utter a single response, Sam let out a, gi a giant animalistic roar, sending waves of fear down my spine and tackled Malik to the ground. <laughs> Stared at Sam began to slam punches into the mouth of his face, one right after another. Sam's skin began to morph and shift with each punch, changing from human to something else. Before I was allowed to see Sam's new form, however, a pair of hands quickly covered my eyes. Instinctively, I reached up and gripped them, trying to pull them off. A voice stopped. It's me. Don't look. <laughs> my god, Damien. <laughs> Damien is like the the the, the heart puller for me the entire time. I listened carefully and let the last two words to hear my mind. Don't look. Why? What was being hidden from me? I wanted to know, but somebody told me to obey Damien's command. I could still hear Sam screaming and grunting with each punch she rammed into Mouse's face, but the occasional crackings of bone and blood splatter echoing in the air. Maybe it was better that I wasn't able to see. That's enough, Sam! Almost instantly after James' command, the sound stopped. The only thing anyone could hear then was Sam's pants and grunts from it for air. <sighs> oh. Malix is like dead, and you've lost your fight. glamour spell. Shut up. Glamour spell, what did he mean? Why does Sam sound so different? What was this being hidden from me? It's a spell that makes us look human. Yeah. Like I said, I already knew about glamour, thankfully. And not like act all dumb, like what the hell is glamour? Like, well, not act all dumb, but be all dumb. Because glamour was in the wolf among us. I froze. Look human. They didn't look like human after all. What do they look like? Like demons. <laughs> As if Matthew knew what Damien was talking about, Matthew spoke up, followed by the sound of a cork popping out of a bottle. Well, not for much longer. Here. He's Let's go. Flex. You gotta regain your glamour spell and you're all out of energy. Come on. Fine. Whatever. Sam, Sam's story seems a bit longer in the fighting. I can a, a small clinking glass being passed before hearing Sam guzzle down a liquid of some sort. The feel of the air around me gently began to warm back up, insinuating that everything had returned to normal. Finally, Damien moved his hand from my eyes, allowing me to see around me once again. The devils, including Iris, had fled. On top of Malix's body was dirty she that was quickly turning red from blood. I could see that Malix's face was completely caved in, making a dip in the blanket. Oh, that's disgusting. The boys, however, had gathered around me, all of them, including Sam, looking like nothing had happened. What? What just... I tried to speak, but everything zipped around in my head at the whole event, that I felt like speaking was impossible. Let's just get you home, miss. There's nothing more to see here. I could only nod. What had happened boggled my mind to the point of disbelief. I was second-guessing everything, lost in the sea of what, and how, and when. As I walked out of the warehouse, I looked to Sam for some form of sign that I wasn't dreaming. Sam kept his eyes down and away from me. It was over. I looked at Sam, feeling my heart flutter in my chest. I didn't want him to leave, but would he have to stay? I hoped that he could say no and ask me to stay longer. As if he knew what I wanted, Sam moved and stepped to me, putting his hand in his pocket and looking down at the ground. He was still ashamed of what he had done, but he spoke to me regardless. Hey, um, I... Shit, um... I kinda... <sighs> I wanted to thank you for your energy and stuff. Well... I... I kinda wanna stay here. Can we stay here? Please?
had to like pause and reflect. Seems like his way of asking seems different than the other guys. That's for sure. It seems more genuine, I guess. Okay, I heard that the my heart skipped while a large red brush ran across my cheeks. The boy stared at Sam wide eyed, but I didn't dare to speak. Sam stepped back to give me space, returning to where he was. I moved my gaze across each boy, trying to make a decision. Uh, let them stay, of course. I wanted them to stay. I want him to stay. I watched a happy smile grow on Sam's lips. He shared my excitement, knowing that we would be together longer. Who knew how long we would stay together? All I cared about was that I would be with him. The others quickly left to finally rest, leaving me and Sam alone at last. My heart fluttered a bit as Sam walked closer to me. Looking to his feet, he was nervous, but it was really cute to see him that way, so I didn't do anything but smile. Hey, um, thanks for letting us stay. Of course, Sam, I mean... Uh, you're, you're, you're my boo thing, I gotta let you stay. You're welcome, Sam. I'm happy to have you stay here. I watched his smile brighten a bit before clearing his throat and looked up at me with a serious face. I didn't know if it was the tiredness or my growing attachment to him, but I felt myself sway a bit on my feet. However, Sam's face made it clear that he wanted to say something else, make me forget that my bed was also calling for me. Listen, about what happened at the warehouse. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> no, it's fine. It did what you had to do. I understand. I had accepted everything that had happened and knew that Sam had, had, had to do what he had to do. He was real and he was someone I didn't want to be without, even if that meant nothing against my curiosity. Besides, I was too tired to explore that memory further. Sam nodded bef before holding out a hand to me. Come on, let's get you to bed. I was still in my school clothes, but I was too tired to strip or care. <laughs> that line always gets me. I looked to Sam, finding a yawn from escaping me, as he gently ran a hand over my hair. Get some sleep, alright? I'll make some breakfast again for you in the morning. Thank you. But you know, sometimes I shouldn't be making you breakfast. I nodded with a tired smile before watching him slowly stand, and leave my room closing the door. A wave of happiness washed over me as I laid in bed. I made a good choice. Sure, it would be hard, but I could tell that it would be able I would be able to manage it. Help around the house would be help around the house and being with a man whom I was slowly starting to fall for would be worth it. That's where she rapes me and all that shiz. Diana, I'm just gonna say blurt out Diana. Uh, I don't remember Rohono, I guess. I guess this is a choice I didn't pick real <laughs> I stepped up gently, pushing the boys away to the way to, to be face to face with Diana. I was fierce and she was about to feel my wrath. You are in my house. You are an intruder and you have no power here. Oh really? Do I have to remind you of the power I have, dear? I don't give a flying fudge. With a snap of her fingers, my mind suddenly locked up and it felt blank. I could see the world around me, but I lost control of my body. The boys quickly formed around me, with James gripping to Diana's wrist in anger. You will leave this instant. Or what? You'll kill me? I completely dare you to. Let me do it. I could use the workout. Don't. The boys looked at Damon while Di Diana sparked at my blank state. I wanted to fight this fool, but her power held me down. And why not? She wants us to kill her. If she dies, then civil war starts in the demon world. <laughs> Very good, sweetie. I'll drink my water. What happens in the demon world doesn't concern us anymore. We live here now. The demons will come to the human world and hunt us down before attacking each other. The demons will 
come to the human world? All of, all because of her? You sneaky bitch. With another snap of Diana's finger, I was released from her hold, almost buckling to my knees. Well, nose. will you all change your minds? I assure you, it's for- No. I felt my heart flutter, especially when my eyes landed on Sam. He kept- Don't turn on her. <laughs> he kept close to me, glaring daggers to Diana. I could feel that he was completely adamant in his choice to stay. I don't know what, but I was incredibly happy to know he wanted to stay. Sam walked over to me and placed a hand on my shoulder, looking at me with concern. If she comes after you, you need to tell us, okay? Of course. I nodded, knowing that he wanted to protect me. Sam gently took his hand from my shoulder and very gently moved a strand of hair from my face. However, make me blush and forget what I was thinking about. That's like always the killer move. It's like moving the hair away from the face. So cute. Like, I don't know, that gets to me. The sound of collective chuckles and playful snickers whispered through the air, making me blush even more. As Sam grunted in reply, the laughter stopped. I looked up to see he was glaring at his brothers, a fist forming in his hand, ready to swing at one of them. No, th this part will, will keep quiet. S Sam! Sally Diana stopped in front of her trap. Sam, who is... It then dawned on her. Ah, one of the boys. Why don't you tell me which boy is Sam? Ugh, Diana just gets on my nerves. I felt myself not in compliance. The, the third. Diana giggled and replied before letting go of my face and stepping back. Really? The brute? With you? Yeah. Why not? I nodded once again, but this time partially on my own decision to reply. Then I let out that mirror to cat's purr. Let out a sound that mirrored a cat's purr, before stepping back away from me. Alright then. Well, if it's the brute you're infatuated with, you should really rethink your romantic options. What? Why? He's totally fine, okay? What? Trust him. I looked at Sam unsure of what was going on, but I nodded. If this was the only way to learn, then this was my chance to know. I guess this isn't different? Huh. I thought it would be different, but I guess not. After what seemed the hours, I finally woke up, slightly refreshed. My body knew that if I slept any longer, I'd be all, I would be up all night, which was not part of the plan for the day. I rubbed my eyes and sat up, letting a soft groan escape my lips. In response, something beside my bed shuffled, causing me to look over. I didn't know what I was expecting. Beside me, sitting in a chair beside the bed, was Sam, rosing himself up to see me awake. I smiled at him, seeing his slightly ruffled hair and tired eyes. Oh, you're awake. How do you feel? I'm pretty happy because you're beside me. <laughs> Better. Sam nodded before he looked down at the bed, leaning over it to stare at the blanket. I'm such an idiot. If I was stronger, you wouldn't be like this. Sam, it's not partially all your fault. I have to be stronger too. We can't. I can't be always leaning on you, okay? But like, what if you're hurt and I can't do anything because I'm so weak? That's not cool. Sam, it's not your fault. No, it's my fault. It's our fault. Look at you. You're in bed again. After us using our powers again. And you're a target again because of us. We never should have come. Don't say that. Then I would never have seen you. Or met you or anything with you. I quickly reached over and put my finger on his lips. Stopping him from going any further. I didn't want to hear anything. Sam, it's okay. I wanted to help you out. I offered to let you all stay. Nothing is your fault. I gently moved my hand and cupped Sam's cheek, staring at him with concern. 
I didn't want him to hold guilt in his mind about this whole ordeal. Diana was desperate and she'd hunt anyone for them. It wasn't his fault. She was desperate enough to hunt them down. Sam looked back, defeated by my hand, before his eye before his closed bleh, before he closed his eyes and let out a sigh. However, I grew curious. So, Sam, you're a noble? Sam opened his eyes to look at me. He didn't seem angry, but he had a coldness in his voice as he spoke. I was a noble. I'm not a noble anymore. Not anymore? I was the third son of the Demon Lord. My brothers and I lived together in the castle as nobility. But since James was the oldest, James became royalty and was heir to the throne. Hmm. The whole situation became one gigantic boring mess. So we all grouped together and left to come here. Once that happened, we surely lost the chance to ever get forgiveness. What was it like while you were there? Like I said, one gigantic boring mess. Eric, Matthew, and I were as replacements in case James fucked up. Since Eric was before me and since my dad was a dickbag, I wasn't ever likely to get the throne. So I spent my days lazing about and not giving two shits about anything. Not even my mom could control me. Your mom? Yeah, she's not like my asshole of a dad. She was actually caring and kind, but was a pushover. Sorry if my voice sounds weird, like, <laughs> ugh. I don't know what's with the weather, but my nose is all clogged up, so... <laughs> Sam let out a small laugh. I could tell he was getting nostalgic. She always thought I could be more than I was. But my dad definitely made sure I knew my place. In response, I became the rebel's son. Hanging out with the commoner demons and such just to piss my dad off. I swear, I'm surprised he didn't kill me out of shame. That's horrible. Sam stared at me as if I had slapped him. He then sighed and ruffled my hair a bit. Don't even worry about it. You need rest. You don't need to know about the demon world. But I want to know more about you. Sam stared at me once again as if I had slapped him. I couldn't tell whether I was pissing him off or intriguing him. He let, up, he let his hand that was ruffling my hair fall down. Fall down, huh? He let, a, he let his hand that was ruffling my hair fall down the strands of my hair. D that, okay. Stopping in my cheek to cradle it. For a strong man, Sam knew how to be soft. Which is the instant kill, heart kill. Instant heart kill. <sighs> Sam let out a sigh before unlinking his dog tag from his neck and putting it around mine. I'm warning you, my past is boring. Sam wrapped his fingers gingerly around the dog tag, and I watched as green mist began to surround his hand, and the dog tag. The green aura wrapped around the necklace until it snaked around my head, and before I knew it, it was surrounded in green light. When the light had subsided, I was back in the main hall of the demon castle. I looked around feeling unable to move, but I could practically see everything as clear as I had before. Bring that back! My head shot towards the sudden explanation where I saw Sam rush into the hall with a quite large basket of bread. No chance in hell, creepo! Sam then did what I only ever saw on TV or mo TV shows or movies. He stomped his foot on the ground, causing a large boulder to burst from it. Burst out of it. Burst out from it, before he kicked it towards the entrance he had came from. I could only stare as the boulder didn't demolish the door. It was flying towards, but simply skidded to a stop blocking the entrance. <laughs> That was easy. Sam then turned into the hall, looking around as he walked towards the room. He took a small roll of bread and stuffed it into his mouth, only able to cover half of it as he stared at the sea. I was surprised. Why does Sam still bread? Why would he still? Why would he still bread? He was a rebel, yes, but he was a noble. He wouldn't get in trouble for taking food, but he had a basket of bread. Sam chewed and swallowed the bread he started consuming inside. Fucking asshole, piece of shit, parrot. Damn. At least you have your folks. What the hell was that? I turned to see another demon step out from the 
from behind a pillar towards Sam. Sam sparked at him and tossed him the basket of bread. Think that's enough for you and your brother? More than enough. This means a lot, man. Don't mention it, Gaku. Gaku smiled and held out a hand to Sam, who took it and shook it. We owe you for this. You don't owe me jack shit. Now get going before you get caught. Gaku nodded. However, Gaku quickly got out the, got out a, got out a dog tag from his trench coat and handed it out to Sam. Sam stared before reaching out and taking it. What is this? A gift. A human world trinket. I know you and your brothers have been interested in it. Maybe this might bring you closer to it. Sam stared before looking down at the gift. It was, it was glimmering silver, almost in train. Entrancing Sam's gaze. As Sam looked back up, Gaku lifted off off of the ground and flew out, a, out an open window into an almost sickly purple sky. The human world. Sam looked back down at the trinket before wrapping it with green magic. Like I can get any closer. Sam tossed the trinket into the air, letting it vanish into an unknown oblivion. I smiled a bit at the sight, knowing the future of that point. What surprised me was a green orb slowly floating towards Sam, wrapped in a purple-like aura. Sam didn't even turn around, but spoke as if he knew. What do you want, Mom? Mom? How is that orb his mother? The orb simply floated in its place as Sam turned to it with an almost angry glare. Yes, I stole that bread and gave it to the commoner, all right? Don't judge me. He, I mean, Sam's not doing anything bad. I mean, he's pretty much helping others out. Once again, Sam was not responded to. At least not from what I heard. Sam clenched his teeth and crossed his arm, heaved. Yeah, yeah, whatever. The orb then floated over to Sam and lightly brushed his cheek before flying off, disappearing into the air. Sam sighed, rolling his shoulders. I need to get out of here. He looked like he was he has a lot on his mind, but his closed mouth wouldn't let him speak. However, none could question the irritation. Eventually, Sam stopped the magic, taking the dog tag off of me, and holding it in his hand before looking to me. What did I tell you? his hand over my hand. I couldn't help but felt, feel my heart squeeze within my chest at the sight. He truly cared. Then let out a small sigh before looking to me, removing his hand from mine. Now get some sleep. You still need rest. We'll wake you up when dinner is done. So I'm gently pressing back down and onto the bed, resolved in what had happened. Of course, we're gonna steal a kiss. I couldn't let him leave without doing something. I quickly pulled Sam down to me, lifted my head, and gently kissed him, softly laying a hand on his cheek to keep his face close. Sam stared in deep surprise before hesitantly kissing me back, caressing my cheek and slightly melting at the touch of our lips. Look at his face, it's so funny. A soft sigh skipped his lips before he slowly pulled away with a smile. He gently licked his lip, making my making me go red in the face at the simple gesture. I let out a satisfied sigh before returning a hand through my hair. Sleep, doofus. <sighs> but face. And with that, he stood up and left the room, leaving me to rest as per his request. 
I smiled to myself before relaxing into the mattress. <laughs> oh my lord. And this is where we're gonna stop. Four? Yeah, four. Wow. We're getting to the part where it's near the ending, which is sad. I mean, I feel like Sam's story is quite long compared to the other guys. Like, it's not like his story-wise, but like, just his response and actions are way longer than the other guys. So probably Sam is the main guy that the the author thought everyone would pick, but I obviously chose Damien. But Sam's getting to my heart. It's really getting to my heart. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.